welcome and thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Blakely and I'll be co-hosting the webinar with Shannon this afternoon. And we also have Amanda with us today. Um, he'll be helping answer your questions in the chat as we go. Today, our webinar will cover managing um, new members, bill pay, and it'll also cover some best practices for using your officer purchasing card. Just a few things to keep in mind before we get started. Um, this is a general vault webinar. So if you have specific questions about your chapter or your national organization um, handle something, please reach out to the appropriate support email address with those questions and they can help you um, navigate that. So to kick off, um, spring recruitment is underway for many of the universities. Um, so we just want to make sure that you know how to add new members, update your member roster, um, and ensure proper billing for all new members as well. So the first thing we're going to look at today is just adding new members um, and making updates to your chapter roster. So you're gonna click on the chapter button here to open your membership menu. And to add new members, you'll go to add new members here. There are two options for adding members. Um, you can add a member through uh, one at a time through this form here, um, filling out just the required fields. Click save and continue. And that is going to um, populate the member on your roster and they'll also show up here. Um, if you're adding a large number of members, the easiest way to do that is to add members in mass. Um, when you click add members in mass, there's a template for you to download. It's just an Excel file. Um, when you download that file, there are going to be some required fields that you have to complete, and that's going to be the first and last name, the email address, and then the member status, which is the status that a member has with your um, headquarters. Um, there's going to be a lot of fields that are there for you. Um, you can input addresses, cell phone numbers, all kinds of information about your members, however much you want to put in. You have to have at least those four fields filled out. Um, then once you save that file, you'll upload it here. And um, once you upload the new members, you'll get a screen that lets you take a look at the data that you're importing. Just make sure everything looked good. Um, and then once you click submit, they will appear here and the members added in the last seven days. It's a best practice to always check the members added last seven days screen before you start adding new accounts, just to make sure that we're not adding duplicate accounts of members um, so that we can keep your roster clean. And also it cuts down on the confusion for a member if they just have the one account. I will make a note that if you do not see these options available to you, um, you'll just need to update members via your national database portal. So once the new members are added to the roster, and we have them here, uh, this is just a reminder that the member status is uh, referring to your members standing with your headquarters. So um, it's important to make sure that the status that you use is um, for uninitiated members first, even if you're planning to um, initiate them officially in the next couple of days, or um, maybe they've actually gone through the initiation process already if you have a particularly short new member period. Um, it's really important that when we're adding them into the roster, we're making sure to add them um, using whatever status your organization uses for um, new members so that they can go through the entire process. Um, when a member is added with a new member status, the system will send them the appropriate registration information. Um, if there is a contract or something that they need to sign, it'll send them that as well. And then some of our national partners have uh, fees that are auto-assessed to new members' accounts. We want to make sure that that is completed. Um, so just make sure that you're entering using the right member status. For many of our national partners do require initiation reports to be filed through Vault. So members can be added with um, the appropriate member status so that they'll populate in the member initiation report. If you go to the chapter, um, you'll see member initiation reporting down here. And if your organization um, has any specific requirements, when you click on this, there'll be a link to show you um, your organization's specific requirements for um, reporting your initiated members. So when adding new members, it's also important to remember to update their billing group right away. Um, if we click on one of these new members, you'll see that the billing group that they've been added with is temporary. Um, and this temporary billing group doesn't have any charges associated with it. So if we are sending out bills, but we haven't updated Colin's account, for example, um, he is not going to be charged. 
So to update your members um, with a temporary billing status, you're gonna go to the billing tab and assign members without a billing group. You're gonna select the billing group that these members to, should be assigned to. In this case, we're gonna just use new members. And then you can either select each member individually or if uh, this should apply to all new members, you'll select this button here. And then update billing group. And then if we go back to um, the account, you'll see that he's now in the new members billing group. So he is going to have um, all of the charges assessed to him appropriately moving forward from this date. Sometimes though, we're not adding new members at the beginning of a billing cycle, we're adding them in the mid-cycle mid um, after charges have already been assessed to the existing accounts. So Vault does not back bill charges when a member is added to the billing group mid-cycle. Um, so you may need to manually assess charges to your new members. To do this, you're gonna click on the billing tab and then we're gonna select add transactions to a group. Um, from here, you can sort by your billing group. So in this case, we'll go to new members. You'll select the members who need to have new charges added to their account. Then we'll click next steps. And here's where you would enter those transactions. So this is how, you know, if, if we've already sent out the cycle that has your new member charges associated with it, and we need to go ahead and um, apply the semester chapter dues to their account, you'll select charge. We'll say semester new member dues. Select the, the appropriate income account, and then input the amount of that charge. You can add up to five charges, so we can itemize out charges um, depending on how you have your billing set up. And then you'll click next steps to preview the transactions. And you'll see um, the charge assigned to each of the members that you've selected. And then when you create transactions, those pending transactions are now gonna apply to their account. They're gonna pend on the account um, throughout the rest of the day and they'll uh, officially post overnight and then be viewable to your new members at that point. Um, so before we move on and uh, look at the next phase of our webinar, I'll just pause here. Um, I know uh, I've seen a couple of questions coming through, so we'll just take a quick look and see if there's anything that we can address for the whole group. Um, okay. So when adding a transaction, does it have a due date that the member can see from there and in the system? That's a really great question. Um, so when you're adding a new transaction, um, mid-cycle, it is not going to go out to that member officially. I mean, it'll be visible on their account, but it won't be sent out on the statement until the next statement date. So, um, you know, if we were adding something today, but the next statement isn't dropping until March 1st and due on March 15th, then the charge that we added today wouldn't officially be due in Vault system until March 15th. And I do see a couple of different questions about um, if it's possible to get a recording of this to view again later, and the answer to that is yes, we will be sending out a recording um, of our webinars uh, at the end um, of the week. And then additionally, once we send them out, we also upload them to our YouTube page and to our Vault help desk, um, which is available to you under the get help link here. Um, I see another question that asks if those charges that you assess manually would show up on their, um, their My Omega Phi, just like the national dues will. Um, yes, they do show up in the same place. They show up just as a, a transaction on the account, and then they'll also be populated in the, the member's next statement. All right. Just one more second to see if any other questions come in. We have a question asking how you would change a charge for the billing group. Um, so if you need to make updates to your scheduled charges, that's something that you do um, 
under the billing tab. And if you go to um, billing overview, you'll be able to see uh, whatever scheduled charges for that um, term are already out there and you can edit charges if that cycle hasn't already passed. Um, last, I have a question to ask, would you have to manually bill if you missed a cycle? Yes. So um, if you miss a cycle, so if we are, we are adding a member on cycle two, um, we've already sent out statements for cycle one, and you need them to have those charges that were originally processed on the first cycle date, then yes, you would have to manually assess those charges. We don't back bill members who are added um, mid-cycle. All right, guys, that was some great questions. Thanks so much for um, participating with that. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll keep answering those throughout the rest of the webinar. Um, now I am going to stop sharing my screen for just a second. And I'm gonna pass things over to Shannon. Um, and she will uh, talk to you a little bit about bill pay and also, um, about the Office of Purchasing Card as well. Thanks, Mike. Let me get just a second to get everything pulled back up and we'll get started on the bill pay portion. All right, so now we're gonna review most of the content under the bill pay menu and then the Office of Purchasing Card. So we're gonna navigate to bill pay. So the first option you have under the bill pay menu is registers. All bill pay fund registers and Office of Purchasing Cards, both active and inactive, uh, will appear on this page. Bill pay funds are listed with their available balance, which includes all process transactions, pending deposits, pending payments, and pending transfers. You can select a bill pay fund or officer purchasing card to view the detail of the register. So the register detail is gonna show all deposits, transfers, credits, or payments. Uh, balance information is listed at the top of the page, and then the date range is editable, so you can search for any given time frame. You can select the pencil icon to edit your transactions that you have on bill pay. So you can recategorize, you can view the summary of the bill. Um, sometimes you can view the bill image. Um, so all of that is editable from here. Um, to edit the bill though, you can select the bill tab and then any of the information you see listed here is editable. Um, if it's not, of course, you can reach out to us and we'll uh, operation support and we'll help you get that bill edited as needed. Uh, but you can change the bill amount, the due date, and recategorize the transaction as needed. And I do apologize, give me one second, I'm going to mute myself. Okay. All right. So moving back to the registers, you can select add fund or you can select add card um, to provide operational support, the information needed to assist you with setting up a new bill pay fund or ordering a new purchasing card if needed. Under the action column, you'll see the dollar sign um, that allows you to initiate one-time transfers from one bill pay fund to another, from officer purchasing cards, to officer purchasing cards or any associated external bank accounts. Um, one thing I do wanna note though is with the officer purchasing card, it must be funded from a bill pay fund. So um, you'll have to move money into a bill pay fund to transfer on to an officer purchasing card. All right, moving on to the payment section. The payment section is broken down into four tabs. So we have outstanding bills, pending payments, scheduled payments, and calendars. The outstanding bill section shows any unpaid bills. You can filter the list and select the criteria um, in the drop down box. So, if you want to see anything that is requiring your approval, or if the bill is outstanding because it requires somebody else's approval, you can filter the list to only show those bills. To authorize a bill that needs your approval, you'll simply just select the checkbox under the bill to authorize that payment. And then you can select the plus or minus button to expand or collapse the bill information. Pending payments are listed by fund. So each column, um, it's broken down into again to each bill pay fund and then each column is sortable. And then you can also filter um, to show anything that requires your approval or others approval or what's been authorized but hasn't been paid yet. 
and to sign the bills as well you can select the checkbox and it goes ahead what goes ahead and approves that bill for you scheduled payments are typically recurring and entered in advance with specific criteria such as uh, vendor start and end dates frequency amount and auto approval if signature requirements are met and the funds are available, scheduled payments are processed at 2 p.m. each business day. And then if you need to delete a scheduled payment, um, you'll just select the trash can icon. And then next, the calendar section can provide a monthly, weekly, or daily view of bills and payments and their associated due dates. Um, but you do, however, have to add those bills. They're not um, pre-filled for you. Right. Moving on to print local checks. Uh, if you have this feature enabled, this is where you'll go to print a local check after a bill has been entered. So we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to go enter a payment together so we can go through this process. So we'll navigate back to the payment section and select add bill. You'll select the vendor and payee and complete the form. Um, so remember anything with an asterisk is required for the payment to be submitted. So party time rentals. All right, under the payment selection, you'll select the fund that you want the bill to come from, um, and then the payment amount will default based on the bill amount. If you wanted to change that and pay in installments, you could separate that out as well. The pay on date will default to seven days before the due date, so if you want to change that, you can also do from here. So if you don't want to pay it until it's due or you want to pay it on the first, you can change that. Um, you also have the option to add a payment memo if you choose to, so you can put um, what it's for, um, your organization name, or anything related to the payment to help the vendor know how to apply your payment. All right, and then of course you want to authorize your payment. So the next one, payment processor, um, it determines if a mega file will process and mail your payment or if you'll print the check locally. So all you have to do is select one or the other, and if um, so for this instance we're going to just do print check locally. Um, and then print instructions would be added if you wanted to us to include the invoice with the payment if we're processing it or if you needed the payment overnighted, you would include that there. All right, so once the form is complete, just select submit. And then once the payment is submitted, um, the funds are automatically deducted from your available balance if Omega Phi is processing the payment. Um, and then the bill will be viewable under the pending payment section. If you are processing the payment um, locally, which means you're gonna print it, we're gonna go ahead and move to the print local check section and go ahead and get that payment processed. So print local checks. This section is broken in, it's broken into three sections. So we have local checks pending approval, local checks to process, and then local checks to print. So in this instance, the check that we want to get paid out um, it's going to require other approvals. So as soon as the payment has been approved by um, alumni, volunteers, or other officers, um, it'll move to the checks to process. Um, and then from here, you'll have, there'll be a little gear icon that you'll select to get that payment processed. Once it's been processed, it moves to the print section. And then from here, you can just select the print icon. A new screen will pop up with the check that you want to get printed and you'll just simply click the print button at the top of the screen to print that check. Now you can use any printer you have but you must have a Megafy check stock in order to print on checks to print local checks so you can contact operations support to place an order. A ream of 500 checks is $45 and a thousand checks are $60 and that money um, can that can be paid out of your bill pay fund. All right. All right, so moving on to transfers. All pending and process transfers are listed within the transfer section. Um, to add a tra transfer, simply select add, and then a one-time transfer or a scheduled transfer. So we'll do one-time transfer. Um, enter the amount you wish to transfer, select where you're transferring the money from. So if it's 
you're initiating a transfer from an external bank account or from a bill pay fund, you'll select that fund and then where you want the money to be transferred to. And let me do this. All right, so there's two types of transfers. There's ACH and there is a wire transfer. Um, a wire transfer can be initiated for a same day credit from a bill pay fund to an external bank account uh, for $75. And then ACH transfers are no additional cost, but it can take a day or two for the funds to be made available. So just keep that in mind when you're transferring um, funds between bank accounts and Omega-5. And then transfers between bill pay funds and officer purchasing cards occur immediately. So if we needed to transfer money from one bill pay fund to another, that can be done in real time. All right, the next item of course is gonna be review card transactions. We're gonna skip over that um, in officer purchasing cards and just go ahead and move to vendors. We'll come back to officer purchasing cards in just a few minutes. Um, so vendors are merchants or individuals who are paid from bill pay. The vendor screen um, lists all vendors your chapter has ever paid via bill pay. Each column is sortable and then you can filter uh, the list of vendors by selecting criteria at the top of the page um, in these drop down menus. So if you wanted a regular vendor or if you wanted to only show members that you have reimbursed, um, you can filter that list. From the vendor detail screen, you can view and manage specific vendor information, including the vendor register, bills, payments, scheduled payments, vendor profile, and vendor files. But everything related to this vendor will live in their vendor detail screen. All right, moving on to user access. Um, the user access page lists all bill pay users and the per their permissions for a specific bill pay fund. So you can select the plus sign in the top right hand corner to add bill pay access for a current vault user. You can select the trash can, trash can icon to remove their bill pay permissions. And then when granting bill pay access, uh, you must grant it at the overall vault level and on the bill pay fund level. So just because a user has managed access to the bill pay menu does not give them, um, automatically give them access to the specific bill pay funds. So let's walk through adding a new bill pay user. First, we're gonna go to the gear icon in the top right hand corner and select vault users. All right, so let's just pretend that Mallory is a new undergrad officer who needs manage access to all menus on Vault. So we'll go ahead and click her name and get her added here. So everything is listed as manage. And as you can see here, she has bill pay manage access now. Okay, um, remember just because she has manage access to the bill pay menu, again, it does not give her permission to the funds. So let's go ahead and give her that permission that she needs. So we'll go back to bill pay and user access. And we're gonna find Mallory's name on the list. All right, so starting with bill pay global permission, this is gonna give her access to view and enter all bills and then view and manage all vendors and cards. So we want her to be able to do all of those things within vault. So we're just gonna click grant all permissions. And now she's able to view all bills, enter bills, manage all the vendors, and manage all the cards, regardless of which fund, bill pay fund, anyone's ever been paid out of. So next we need to give her access to the appropriate bill pay funds. So we're gonna select this plus sign here to add her fund account permissions. Now based on default permissions, some of the rights listed below for the fund can be edited and some cannot. But for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna just pretend that everything is good. She can have permissions to all of the menus here um, for funds, payments, and transfers and give her all of that access. So then click Submit. And as you can see now, once we refresh the page, Oops, sorry, let's pick our user again. She now has access to the chapter operating account. Um, 
So depending on what the bill pay user needs access for for your chapter, you'll do those same steps to grant them access to each fund that they need access to. So uh, depending on however many funds you have and depending on her role with the chapter, you'll have to complete that, those same steps for each bill pay fund. All right, so we did skip over the officer purchasing card stuff earlier, so let's circle back to that. Um, officer purchasing cards um, is a megafies benefit to using vault bill pay for bill pay services. Officer purchasing cards um, are a safe and convenient way to make purchases for your chapter. So from the officer purchasing card screen, um, you can view all cards associated with your chapter's bill pay bill pay account. You can view the balance on all cards, transfer funds to any active card, select a card, and then you can select a card from the list to view their card register. Um, you can add a new card, and then you can view any pending invites that you have out here. To add a new card, you'll just select Add Card. If you're adding a card for yourself, select Me, and you'll complete the form. If you're adding a card for another officer or volunteer, select Four Others and complete the form by selecting um, their name from the pick list here and then click submit so the person you picked will receive an email invite with details of the program and instructions for enrollment um, each chapter is eligible for one free card and then each additional card ordered costs ten dollars per month but it is assessed annually in one installment of 120 dollars so when a transaction, when a card is used to purchase, uh, the transaction is automatically recorded in, in Vault for you. So we'll go to review card transactions. Um, the transaction will appear here. So from here, you'll be able to code the expense to the appropriate expense account, attach the receipts, and then add any notes related to the purchase. Um, just keep in mind some organizations do require receipts and notes, so make sure you're keeping track of all your receipts and then um, reviewing these card transactions regularly to make sure you don't fall behind in coding any of your expenses. So a few tips and tricks um, to get the most out of your card. Um, do not share your card with anyone, including other officers or members. That is your card. It is tied to your name. Um, so we just don't, don't recommend that you share it. Um, to dispute fraudulent transactions, um, you can call Brightwell's Fraud Department if you click the plus sign right here, or the question mark, I'm sorry, you'll be able to see um, their contact information and their hours. So if you suspect fraud on your card, go ahead and report it right away, um, and that's the information to do that. Use only secure and trusted websites from online purchases. Do not save your card info on any website, and just be sure to sign out of any sites after you complete your purchase. This is a prepaid card, so the card's only valuable if there's funds on the card. So only keep what you need on your card, and then any excess funds should be transferred back to your bill pay fund. If you are using your card for lodging expenses, such as hotels, Airbnbs, um, expect an additional 20% hold on your available funds for security measures. We do encourage you to load funds on your card to cover this additional amount. So don't just put what the total which you've been quoted, go ahead and put a little bit of extra on that card. Um, again, regularly review your transactions and take pictures or screenshots of your receipts immediately after your purchase so you don't have to keep up with paper receipts. If you've ordered a card and they have not yet received it, um, it will arrive in a plain white envelope addressed to you within 10 to 14 days of the enrollment date. So when you receive your card, go ahead and get it activated. And then after your new card is activated, be certain to deactivate any cards for any previous card holders or officers. And then as always, we do have tons of helpful resources here in our Help Center. Um, we have a whole section on bill pay and officer purchasing cards to help you along the way. If you do, if we don't have the answer for you're looking for, you can always click the support button here. Um, so that concludes the webinar for today. We hope you found it helpful. We'll stick around for a few more minutes again to answer any questions. Um, and I'll see if there's any that we can um, answer out loud for everyone. Yep. So somebody asked, uh, if a car transaction occurs but has not been approved, does it post to miscellaneous expenses until approved? Yes. Um, every organization has a default expense account for officer purchasing card transactions. So it will default to whatever your organization has, um, and then it's your responsibility to go ahead and review it um, and get it coded correctly to the appropriate expense account. <laughs> 
and um, it does so the follow up to that question was um, there's a transaction that is not approved until the next year it would have been recorded as an expense in the year it occurred versus approved it's really a timing issue of when the the merchant processes credit cards so if you I'm assuming you're referring to end of a fiscal year type situation if you're using that card on the last date of the fiscal year um, and they don't the merchant doesn't you know run their transactions until a couple of days later it will be effective in the fiscal year that that it posts the account so if it was 731 end date and the card doesn't post until 83 it will be um, an 83 transaction all right, I don't see any other questions coming in, um, so we'll go ahead and conclude this webinar. Um, again, you will receive um, the recording of the webinar in the next couple of days, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to check out our Help Center or use that support widget there at the bottom to submit questions to operation support. Um, we appreciate you and hope you all have a great afternoon.